Dude combo. Mm -hmm. Also in the battle uh, modes or whatever you want to call it, there are special cards such as like summons and magic and stuff. And for example, um, some of you may know Cloud from FF7, Final Fantasy 7, and uh, you can just get cards of him. And if you do a combo of him, you can do Omni Slash, uh, Cross Slash, pretty much Omni Slash own. And um, also, like you in the game, when you, you get more attack cards, and they have like a picture of a Keyblade on them, and then it will show like the Keyblade stats, whether it has like an A strength and. So there's like keyblades that are stronger than other keyblades, and you can build like three decks. So you can and switch decks like anytime. You and can. talking about decks, the original starts off with like 28 or something like that. Uh, throughout the game, you, it's a level up kind of game, an RPG, and um, you level up, and you have a choice to increase your attack points, learn a new move, or increase your card points. Basically, that means that you, the card points includes like how many cards you can have in your deck. I recommend uh, not doing that until you get farther into the game because the cards you have at first pretty much suck. <laughs> but it's cool because once you defeat a boss, you get like a card version of them and it has like some kick ass effect. And as we all know, um, Kingdom Hearts is a Disney kind of RPG with other people built in. And you start off the game with Mickey, Donald, and. Goofy, and Jimmy Cricket, but you don't actually get him. But throughout the game, uh, those those cards with Mickey, Donald, and Goofy will show up throughout the game. And when you get them, they have a special attack that can help you. And if you combine it, they can like heal you. They can kill a boss in one hit. All right. Um, next, we're going to talk about the gameplay of the game. Yeah. Let me start that over. It makes no sense. <laughs> gameplay of the game. All right. Next, we're going to talk about the gameplay. Um, it's fairly simple. I mean, it's kind of hard when you're playing a 2D game. When you're supposed to, it feels like you're playing on a 3D kind of map kind of thing. Like, in order to get to certain people like that you're battling or fighting, that's the right term. <laughs> um, you have to move up and down the screen vertically and horizontally, and it's sometimes it's kind of hard to guess where they are. Yeah, and also, they are not random battles. You can, the enemies are on screen, so you can decide if you want to go and battle with them or not. Now, there are special cards you get during battle, too. I just remembered this, and this will help out with the gameplay. Um, during battle, you can kill somebody, and you'll get a card at the end of that battle, or during the battle, and you need those cards to open up doors to other places. There's a treasure card, there's a Moogle card. The Moogles will sell you should know what a move is. If you don't, I cannot explain it. <laughs> um, it will sell, they sell you cards. You can trade cards. You can uh, gamble cards kind of thing. There's just, but um, with these cards, they can, if you want to, there's certain cards that will make the actual enemies attack you or stay away from you. You can have enemies with a certain amount of people in this room. At first, you don't, it's kind of hard to understand, but as you get throughout the game, it, it gets easier. And, um, yeah, the cards can, um, if you do a certain combo, like certain cards, it like does a special ability like sliding dash, like you just go. That, that's right the very the first, and very first move you learn. Maybe there'll be ones where you get advanced where you're like, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially like Blitz. Yeah. Now, <laughs> um, if you're expecting a uh, game experience of original Kingdom Hearts or even Kingdom Hearts 2, I wouldn't really recommend this game for you, but if you want to go on this road or, I don't know, sit on a bench play the game, or up on your rooftop, <laughs> I recommend this game because it's fun, portable. Yeah, because if you ever played Kingdom Hearts 2 without playing this game, I was very confused. I was like, the whole time, like, who is all these characters? Like, why are they saying, like, hey, I know this person? And it's like, I'm like, I know. Um... Now, the PS2 version, I have not yet played, but I do know a few things about it. The gameplay in it is 100% different, kind of. <laughs> it, um, it's 3D. Your person is 3D. The graphics are insane. It is for the PS2, and it only works on PS3s that run PS2 games. Yeah, because 
you know, Sony is sucks now because Sony can. Yeah, yeah, you can get <laughs> battles. Same kind of deal. You, in order for you to enter the battle, you walk up to the person, you can attack them, or if they run into you, which sometimes they do, you on the Game Boy, it will enter like a battle scene. You beat the scene and you're out walking again. You can't run. Well, technically you yeah, can you run can. from Kingdom Hearts, <laughs> but it's kind of gay because it's not like, oh, you're free. No, it's like. You're running there for like five seconds and then it's like, okay, now you can go. <laughs> After but if somebody you hits you up, then you're dead. You're basically. Basically. <laughs> but um, the game, the PS2, I, you might have to look up a different review because yeah, we haven't played, we haven't played it. it. I don't want to spend 30 bucks for having the same game. Even though, if you're better at 3D games and 2D, you uh, probably want to get PS2 version. Um. Ah, uh, let's see here. The the storyline, very good, very good. It, it it does an excellent job bridging the two Kingdom Hearts previous Kingdom Hearts games. Uh, the first one and the Shebang opening of the Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories opens up and you're like, whoa, I know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, in in the game you get to meet Organization Thirteen, which is like they have to be the coolest. Villain group I ever, Axel, some of the sickest names ever. Yeah, the final battle, I will tell you this much. Get ready for an A kicker. It is the hardest final battle I've ever played on a Game Boy game. Harder than any. It's pretty crazy. Right? Yeah, and then it's also if you ever played Kingdom Hearts one, there are villains that you see again in Chain of Memories because. You know, the chain of memories. He um, memories, <laughs> memories, memories. You know, huge the tie in with the story. But, but the part is, this is part of the story. You will enter the cat. It's a castle. You know, most games are. You enter the castle and you automatically you start forgetting things, and you hear that every level you go up, and I believe there's 13 floors. I'm not remember. Every floor you go up, you forget. Or did you you remember or you forget? I think you forget more because you like forget you, more things that like I Sora have. starts forgetting you friends all the way. You fart, you fart, no. <laughs> <laughs> you start forgetting people like, you might know Riku, he's kind of important. Alright, key important person. He seems bad, seems good, there's like a light side, dark side version of Riku. It's like Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. Right? When you beat the game one time through with Sora, you get to play Riku Rebirth, and if you're playing through the game as Riku, Riku is like 80 times stronger, 100 times more fun to play it too, and it makes the game fun because instead of just playing through it once, you're like, oh, well this is boring, you can play through it twice, or three, or four, or ten, like I did. <laughs> um, uh, but overall, I, myself, Johannes from Six Five would rate the game a 4.5 out of 5. Hey, myself, Alec Martelli, two A Martelli 2908, I would have to say, um, same score. Like, 4.5 out of 5. Overall.